If you like electronics and you like to stress your brain, you probably won't watch these videos. And if you watched my last video about retrofitting the aftermarket cluster on this BMW, you've probably seen that when you want to retrofit an aftermarket cluster on a BMW, you lose a couple of important functions. The manufacturer of the aftermarket cluster was so good at creating that cluster, but I don't know what happened. They didn't develop the cluster. They didn't make the cluster to perfectly integrate inside of the vehicle. I don't know what happened there. But when you mount that cluster, you lose a couple of functions. Some of them, they are very important. Some of them, they are not. First is the check control messages. Check control message, check headlight, check low beam, check high beam, uh, washer fluid, check engine. Check engine will still appear only if the error is present and the engine is in lib mode. In rest, you don't see nothing. You need to scan the car to see what errors do you have. How do I know that? Because I have drove this car a couple of days, I don't know, maybe weeks, without the headlight. And I didn't know that. I didn't see it. Another thing that you will lose is the CBS data. The CBS data is the service information, the maintenance, oil change, brakes, uh, brake fluid and so on. That won't be a very big problem for me because it's an old car and I can write on a piece of paper when I change the oil or the brakes and throw that in the glove compartment. Of course, I need to check to monitor it to remember when I have done the service, but that is not very, very important. My idea was, to use the aftermarket cluster for its beautiful LCD and the amazing graphics as an interface and to use the original cluster, the original brain of the car for everything else. So on the car I need to have two clusters. I have ordered and used original cluster to do this job because I didn't want to destroy the original one. I want to keep this in case I will want to sell this vehicle, I will restore it to the factory specs. And even so, I cannot, I, my plan was I cannot use this cluster because it's a different hardware version and have only one single board with everything on it. And the board is big as an entire cluster. And I have opted to buy and use the one that is a different hardware version and the main board is separate than the interface, the face of the cluster. I have brought that cluster. I was able to virginize the cluster for the VIN number of the car, the identification number and miles. I have caught it on the car. Everything worked perfectly. I have removed it. I have modified the case. I have created a nice case for this brain mounted on the car. And at that time I was okay, everything's working. So I need to drive the car to test it. I have drove the car a couple of miles, a couple of good miles, and I have found some problems. First one was important, cruise control. Cruise control didn't work. I was able to activate it. I will have the icon in the cluster, but when I wanted to set up the speed, the cruise control will throw an error and didn't work. I have scanned the car and the error was caused by the cluster, the original cluster, because the cluster have an internal error for the LCD display. Because of that, it didn't work. Another thing with the climate control, the intensity, the luminosity of the LCD screen and the green marking LEDs from the buttons, the intensity of the light will fluctuate, will change. In my head at that time was, oh, okay, every single type of cluster have a photo sensor in the middle for the luminosity adjustment. In case inside of the cabin is darker, everything will dim and the other way everything will will increase the light will increase the luminosity i have found and caught out from the brain from the cluster that uh, option and here in the garage oh, everything is working didn't fluctuate anymore is done but when i pulled the car out in the sun climate control started to do the same thing so now i know that on this car on this model not only the cluster will control the luminosity even the rain light sensor from the windshield. Yeah. Uh, next step, if you remember the same in the last video, uh, you have seen in the CBS data, the miles for the interval miles for the brakes, front and back, always will fluctuate, will change. That was caused by both clusters have a conflict of information. I have think about that and my idea was, okay, that information is sent to the CAN network because the fiber optic is already modified. So I need a filter to filter the can 
information, to send information to the aftermarket cluster, but to block the aftermarket cluster to send something back to the car. Because I don't want the cluster to send something to my car. I want the cluster to be an interface, a nice, beautiful face. So I have an option to buy a can filter, and I didn't want to invest in that. The second option, second idea that I had in my mind was, I can use some diodes. The diodes will let current voltage pass in one direction and block in the other direction. So I have two diodes. Everything worked. I was okay, good. Started the engine. I didn't have engine speed RPMs. Ah, damn it. I have think about what, what can I do? What can I do? What is the problem? I have removed one diode. I don't know from which one can high or can low. The diodes are some SMD diodes. They are very small on the wire. I have removed one, reconnect one line and the tachometer is returned and the service intervals didn't fluctuate. So yeah, win. Next step is to find a way to code this module, this brain to work without that face. I've code and recode and overcode until I almost break the car. I didn't break it, it's okay but I was not able to find the option. The problem was the alive signal, the live signal for the LCD. This brain didn't have the live signal from this processor. So because of that, I had that internal errors and my cruise control didn't work. Unfortunately, I'm not able to simulate that signal because it's a communication protocol between two processors. It's not a 12 volts or three volts on, zero volts is missing or something like that. I'm able to do that. So in this case, I removed the board from the cluster. I have removed the needles with the motors, everything. Removed the speaker for the tour signal. Removed everything else, reconnected on the car and tested. Still have that LCD error. Next step, remove the LCD. Connect the LCD on the board. Rescan the car. Everything went away. So don't want to have all these things inside of the dashboard. I have disconnect the image ribbon from the LCD and let the backlight ribbon connected. Rescan the car, no errors. No image, no errors. But the backlight is working. So I was okay. The problem is from the backlight. I have studied the board and I have found that for the backlight, this is the microchip that is controlling. So I have searched the datasheet online. I have found the datasheet and I have checked it and I have found that it's one pin, pin number eight, that it's sending an information signal to the main processor about the backlight status. When the backlight will fail, this will pull the pin eight to ground. So we'll send a ground signal to the processor that the backlight failed. So that's why the processor will know and will send the information to the main processor and main processor will create that error. So it's okay if I will remove completely this controller from here. There won't be any signal to be sent, so the processor won't know nothing. I have removed it, test the board, and unfortunately, when I have done that, the main board disabled the power supply for the entire board, except the voltage for the processor. So I had a, another new error. I have mounted back the controller and my idea was let me pull back the pin that it's pulling to the ground when I have an error, pin 8. By mistake I have removed and uh, pulled back pin 10, last one. I check it and no error. After that I realized I have done this mistake but pin 10 is the pin that it's controlling the current for the LEDs. And the same, now this controller do not have any feedback about the current and because of that this controller won't send nothing to the processor and it's working. The disadvantage is I have this big board that I need to mount on the car. My idea was maybe I can try to cut the board from here because I do not use this part. I can cut the board from here. I can cut the board from here because everything here, all these lines are for the image of this LCD. So the LCD is out, I don't need them. But here it's a problem. I don't know if inside of this board there is a trace for this processor that is going and going around the board to avoid a ton of other traces. And when I will cut it, I will cut open that uh, trace. So at this moment, I will leave it like that. And 
maybe I will have another idea or maybe some of you will give me another idea. But until then, I will mount this board with that board inside of the dashboard for me to be able to enjoy my aftermarket cluster. To mount this on the car, inside of the car, at this time it will be nice to have the original back casing because the original back casing will encase the entire board and I will have only a straight face here that I will need to cover. But if you remember in the last video, I have cut it to create the smaller case for the main brain, insane in the main brain. So now I want to protect this board against shorting. Even so, this board will be mounted on the plastic air tunnel from the AC system, so won't touch anything. But even so, I want to protect it. For that, I will use this black bag. I have made a small hole here for the plug. I will close the bag. And with some electrical tape, I will double side the back part of the board. So now the main brain will stay here. I will use some zip ties, one in this hole, like so, to connect it, and another smaller one that I need to double in this hole and to double it and give it to someone else like so where is the snipper and probably I will use a zip tie to make sure that these two boards will stay together like so Okay, not bad. Okay, so now to send this board to its new home. I think I will do something like this. I like it. Now I need to try to fish out the zip tie. Okay, one, and the second one. Okay, so this board is not going anywhere. Next I will push this zip tie to have it here. I'll take the main brain. Make sure the plug back there it's aligned and then push it down. Next to reconnect back the fiber optic terminal. I need to reconnect back the main power supply and can plug. I'll make sure that everything is working. Navigation started. Uh, let me see. Nickel information. Uh, Ambi. Component triggering. Delete fault memories. Identification ACU test. Okay, close. Yeah, it's green, it's green. I have one single error and that was caused by me, permanent SAE fault code stored. I need to drive the car to heal itself. Okay, so now the aftermarket cluster. First I need to connect the main plug. I need to send the cluster inside and same time I need to connect the fiber optic terminal. So 
something like that. And I will rescan the car. Delete fault memories. Okay. Onboard info. Oh, vehicle status, sorry. Check control messages. Set time and date. Why is that in red? Combox media. Mm. Ignition switched on, set time and date. Lovely, lovely. But why? What is wrong with my combox? My music is working. The climate control is working. And set up the time and date. And I have resolved the problem with my combox because from my Y splice was kinked. That's why. So I have only one fault error. It's for the SA fault codes. The SA fault codes is stored in the DME because of the cluster before of this modification had the time time criteria wrong or something like that. And even so, that is not a problem. I need to drive the car for a couple of miles and that will be gone. Uh, now you can see front brake pads, nothing, it's fixed. The same with rear brake pads, oh, brake fluid, sorry. The same with rear brake pads, the service interval, it's fixed. Um, I have the vehicle status, check control messages, it's working perfect. If I will start the car, check engine light gone, door open, I have RPMs. Cruise control is activating, but I'm not able to set it up because I'm at standstill. Cruise control cannot be activated. Door open, door open, hood open. Nice. And now, like the last time, I will need to test it for a couple of days or weeks and see if something else will appear. If not, if everything is okay, I will need to do the fiber optic splice digitally and to create a nice case for the original cluster. So with this, thank you for watching these videos. Again, thank you for being with me. And next time, you know the drill. Stay awesome. Bye now.